Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. A Labyrinth is not bad. We've got a Final Death. Harafant is pretty decent in black too, but would still take the Final Death over it. So it's between Final Death and Labyrinth. Labyrinth a bit more flexible, goes into any deck. So if we have a deck that can reliably get to the late game, Labyrinth will be a nice tool in its arsenal. And then there's Final Death, which commits us to black a little bit. But of course a nice uh, versatile removal spell that can also punish the escape mechanic. I don't think Final Death is the clear pick here by any means, since Theros is a, a format with a lot of playables, so there's usually no issues getting enough playables for a deck. So having a land that can act as a removal spell in the late game is a pretty good value, and it also keeps us way more open since we can play it in any deck. I'll take a Labyrinth. Well, now the black removal spells look quite good. There's also an Archon of Falling Stars, Daybreak Chimera, some very good white cards. So do we want to take the removal spell or do we want to take the threat? And then if we take the removal spell, we even have to decide between the premier common removal spells, Maris Grasp and Final Death, which is also a close pick. One uh, can deal with escape creatures a bit better and the other one's cheaper to play. Potentially has some enchantment synergies too. Yeah, I can dig it. And now Dreadful Apathy looks good. There's a Staggering Insight, which had we taken the Archon could have been a consideration. Although it's still close with Apathy, which also has great synergy with the Archon. If we uh, use the ability, it ends up in the graveyard. I think I just take Apathy. Can't really go wrong with this start. Two removal spells, a land that I can act as removal spell. Now I can take a Liar, which is another removal spell that goes into any deck. And Hateful Eidolon is pretty synergistic with Mars Grasp. Not so much with Dreadful Apathy, because it exiles the creature, so it wouldn't trigger the Eidolon, unless the creature died some other way. And there's a Voracious Typhon, in case we want to maybe abandon white and end up black-green. Could also be reasonable. Typhon's very good too. Now right, let's uh, take the Eidolon and hope to get a couple more Maris Grasps. Then there's this pack. Not a huge fan of the Scavenging Harpy. Could take a Leonin as a fine white 2-drop. Could maybe consider the Wayfarer if we think our deck is going to be aggressive enough. Do have a lot of enchantments for the Wayfarer already. So that could also be a reasonable uh, pickup here. Could also end up blue-black, in which case the uh, Brine Giant could be a nice pickup. With a couple enchantments already. So I think you can make a reasonable case for, I guess, all four of these cards, since Harpy is the most on-color pick. But uh, again, given that this set is quite deep on playables, Harpy doesn't often make the main deck, although we are playing best of three, so it could be a reasonable sideboard card against some of the escape decks. I think I'll take a Leonin. Well, Red seems to be pretty open, in this pack at least. But there's also another Leonin, so do I take a second Leonin, or do I pivot into red? And then the question is which red card to take. I have a lot of good options, Ragehound, Oracle, Manticore. Although we don't seem to have a ton of instance for the Manticore at the moment. So between Oracle and Ragehound, usually lean towards Oracle. And then not seeing a ton of interesting cards here. Could take a Hero of the Winds, but don't really see that making the cut in this deck. Flicker of Fate can also have its moments. Can do the Flicker plus uh, Apathy trick. There's Infuriate as a pump spell, in case we end up like Red Black Aggro. Glory Bearers could be fine, Karmetra's Blessing could be okay. Although we don't really seem to be enchanting our own creatures all that much. So it would not necessarily give her creature indestructible. There's Revoke Existence, usually don't mind the first copy. I think I'll take a Revoke. Don't think I'm playing two flickers, although Black-White is probably the color combo with 
the most uh, cool enter the battlefield abilities since we could potentially pick up a couple um, blind breaths at six which can uh, kill a creature when they come into play and then use flicker otherwise taking here of the games to speculate on red could also be fine glory bears not exciting but potentially playable same with the sentry all right so after the first pack we're maybe equally committed to white as we are black since the only like exciting cards in white are really the apathy and uh like maybe the revoke existence in black with eidolon and Mars grasp didn't see a ton of black after the first uh, two or three packs so it's possible that black is slightly cut off in this direction but we'll see well bronze side lines a strong card commanding presence could be okay there's a Funeral Rite, Smogus' favor in black, Piper's okay maybe, if we pick up some Sacrifice outlets. There's a Warbriar Blessing as well. Commanding Presence could be nice, especially if we pick up a Heliod's Pilgrim. Lion means that we kind of have to abandon our two black cards, which could be worth it. Kind of makes us regret taking the Eidolon over the Typhon a little bit. Presence kind of sticks to white, so it doesn't commit me to another color yet. Green-white is not my favorite color pair, but Lion is an okay incentive to maybe move into it. Although, I do want to mention once again that the Lion does have some weaknesses in the set. Normally, this ability to become indestructible would be quite good, but in a set with Myers Grasp as one of the removal spells, it doesn't really help to become indestructible. And then we have all these uh, enchantment removal spells like Apathy, Ichthyomorphosis, that can also ignore indestructible for the most part so i could be convinced to take commanding presence instead which doesn't commit us to another color yet and hopefully pick up a helix pilgrim later Ooh, elspeth's nightmare there's a blind breath i was talking about to combo with our flicker of fate probably gonna take the nightmare though which also potentially synergizes with flicker of fate Mm, Envoy could be reasonable, makes my Grasp, Apathy, and Commanding Presence cheaper, and it's also a good target for Commanding Presence. Could take a Triumphant Surge as more removal. I'll try the Envoy. Another Hateful Eidolon, but gotta take the Heal It's Pilgrim here. Just uh, too good when we have Grasp, Apathy, and Commanding Presence as targets. Ooh, nice. A Rise to Glory. Should be quite good in our deck. We've got a couple auras that uh, easily end up in the graveyard. <laughs> Another pick between Eidolons and Envoys and Triumphant Surges. Well, this could be a great hateful Eidolon deck, especially if we get another Myers Grasp. Yeah, I think I'm down. Another Commanding Presence and another Rise to Glory, wow. So it's pretty strong, although it would become better if we had some higher value creatures that it could get back as well, and we're kind of lacking in the department of like expensive flying creatures like the Chimera, for instance, or the 6 mana Archon of Falling Stars, that would make Rise to Glory even better. Taking the second Rise does make any future auras we take even better. Taking Presence makes taking... Uh, cheap flying creatures in the future better since they can become actual threats by themselves I'll take the rise and then we'll be on the lookout for more uh, synergies well another pilgrim is great kind of gives us an extra copy of commanding presence in a weird way so we're definitely doing it Mogus's favor has to be the pick with uh, two copies of hateful Eidolon in the deck would love me a funeral rites as well here of the winds could be serviceable with the uh, commanding presence but might play a temple thief if we need a two drop here of the pride could be fine too ooh actually a uh, interesting decision I guess when we have double Rise to Glory, I might not need Omen of the Dead as much. Soul Reaper synergizes nicely with Heliot's Pilgrim, which I don't mind sacrificing. 
commanding presence can make one once and can sacrifice to the Soul Reaper. So I think I prefer the creature here. Also having more creatures makes Rise to Glory better. Wow, what a rare to open. Elspeth conquers death. There's another Nightmare in the pack too. Daybreak Chimera would be great. Envoy I would definitely take. Berserker's fine. But uh, Elspeth it is. So we've got both a Nightmare and Conquer's Death. Gotta be the Myers Grasp here with double Hateful Eidolon. Would love a Chimera too. Pegasus I'm a big fan of. But uh, Grasp it is. Mogus' favor could still be fine. Don't think I need Traveler's Amulets. Don't have a ton of escape. Blessing, not super important since the only real creature worth protecting in our deck is the one that we enchant with Commanding Presence. So I don't actually think Blessing is needed. But it's probably still the pick. Eh, I guess second Mogus' favor could definitely be worth it too. With double Hateful Eidolon. Although we don't really want to exile our graveyard when we have Rise to Glory. Since we don't want to risk uh, exiling everything and not having anything to get back. Yeah, maybe we'll end up playing a Blessing if we pick up some expensive enchantment creature that we want to protect. Might get better if we pick up another Transcendent Envoy. And a fourth pick, Phoenix of Ash. Not sure how that happens. It seems to be happening to Phoenix of Ash specifically a lot. I've seen this card go very late a few times. Uh, what are we looking at? Aspect of Lamprey looks pretty appealing. As another aura we can search up with the Helios Pilgrim and synergizes with the Hateful Eidolon quite well too. Don't think we need second revoke, would probably be for the sideboard. And I think we've got enough two drops where we don't need another Leonin. Uh, Funeral Rites looks fine. The only real escape we have is uh, Mogus' Favor. But putting random stuff in the graveyard could be good with Rise to Glory as well. Could see myself playing a Unicorn in this deck, just to have a big creature to get back with Rise to Glory as well, since we didn't really get a ton of expensive creatures so far. Uh, Another Mogus' favor definitely could be fine, especially with the Eidolons and the copy of Funeral Rites we just picked up. But I think our deck needs a couple more heavy hitting creatures. Birth of Miletus, um, what does that do for me? Our deck cares about Auras more than it cares about, like, generic enchantments. Of course it would be potentially serviceable, kind of protect our life total, it's a good defensive card. It still triggers a Unicorn. We don't have a ton of synergy with Hero of the Prides, so we've got an Aspect of Lamprey and a Commanding Presence that we can Enchant or a creature with Flicker Fate, I guess, could trigger it too. And Flicker Fate plus Aspect is also pretty neat. That's another synergy worth pointing out. And a Flicker with a Helix Pilgrim is also decent. So I don't know if we'll end up playing whatever we take here. So maybe I should take the Birth in case we're up against an aggressive deck. I can at the very least use it as a good sideboard card. Yeah, Flicker of Fate with our uh, Sagas, the Conqueror's Death, and uh, the Nightmare is also great. So this should be a good Flicker of Fate deck. Don't think we're splashing red for the Arosa's Blessing. I am interested in an extra Envoy since we have quite a few Auras, especially at 4 mana. Aspect and Presence costing 3 means we can play them on 3 after we play a turn 2 Envoy. Already have a Triumphant Surge. Berserker would be okay, since, again, we could use an extra expensive card. Don't really want to play Rumbling Sentry. But I think Envoy is probably still the pick. And Pegasus is perfect. And I'll take an Amulet, I think, over Fields. Let's take a look at our configuration. Not sure about the Carmetra's Blessing. Hero of the Pride could be cuttable, Temple Thief is cuttable, 
could only end up playing one flicker of fate, but the one copy should be quite good. Glory Bears is cuttable. Triumphant Search is cuttable. Rumbling Sentry probably gets cut. Probably a 17 land deck, since we've got a couple expensive cards. So what if I cut these, got a Flicker of Fate, we're at 41. So putting my removal in one pile here. This is kind of what we're working with. Entrancing Liar also acting as removal, Elspeth's Nightmare and Elspeth Conquers Death. More removal, so we're definitely not lacking in the removal department. We could struggle a little bit to close out the game, but uh, Commanding Presence and Rise to Glory getting back Commanding Presence should help us in that regard. So I think I want to keep the Unicorn just to have a slightly more expensive creature to get back. And we also have a lot of enchantments, so the Constellation ability is definitely going to be useful. I think I want to play 17 lands, partly also because we have Labyrinth, which kind of acts as a spell. But uh, we, we've got potentially some expensive cards. Rise to Glory at 5, we d definitely want to get to. Heliod's Pilgrim can find more 4 mana enchantments that we want to cast. So that's pretty mana intensive. And then, uh, yeah, both the Labyrinth and the Entrancing Lyre are good mana sinks in the deck too. Could see cutting the Leonin, although then we'll be a little bit light on early plays. Yeah, we could not main deck Revoke Existence and just bring it in if we think it's a good matchup for it. Yeah, we don't really want to be cutting creatures. Our creature count is already very low at only 10, and otherwise Rise to Glory also becomes a lot worse. So yeah, I don't think we can cut any creatures. Revoke, maybe cuttable here. Funeral Rites, potentially, too. Although it does potentially enable existing Rise to Glories that we have in hand, and it helps a little bit with Mogus' favor. Or we could play 16 lands, which is another option as well. Playing Birth of Miletus over a, a land, I guess, is also not out of this world. Yeah, playing 16 is a lot more reasonable if we're playing Birth. So how about we play Birth? Cut a land, and then cut one of these two. I guess Funeral Rites can also help hit my land drops. So alright, we'll put Revoke in the sideboard. Play the Rites, 16 lands with Birth and Funeral Rites to also help hit our land drops. Of course, Hateful Eidolon can also help if we're drawing cards with Mars Grasp or Mogus' favor. And then need to make a decision on the mana base. So we do have more white cards. We do have Hateful Eidolon and Myers Grasp as potential early plays as well. Birth gets a Plains, doesn't get a Swamp, but of course we need white mana in the first place to be able to play Birth. Yeah, I could see playing 8 Plains. Not playing a turn 1 Hateful Eidolon is not as bad as not being able to play a turn 2 Envoy, I think. Or a turn 2 Leonin or Birth. We're telling the entire story arc of Elspeth returning from the Underworld. Alright, Elspeth's Arise it is. And we even have the matching sleeve arts. Alright, this should be a good one. Just gotta hope that our mana early on cooperates and we get both colors. But then we should have a powerful deck. Um, play or draw. This could be a draw first deck, we've got double Myers Grasp. And I do want to ensure that I find the right colors of mana. Because we're not really trying to out aggro our opponents. It's just that if we're facing an aggro deck, we could maybe regret being on the draw. But when we have cheap removal like Myers Grasp, we can potentially offset the opponent's aggressive starts with our two mana removal. Myers Grasp. Much better on the draw than on the play, typically speaking. Happy to trade off Leonin for anything. Nightmare can get their next creature here. 
Let's get that horn beetle. They might have Mystic Repeal in hand to get rid of the Nightmare. That's fine. Don't really need to trade since Pilgrim blocks the Leonin just fine. But it wouldn't be a bad trade since this also doesn't attack into the Wardens until we maybe put a commanding presence onto it. So it seems like a fine turn for Pilgrim. And then... Could get a Myers Grasp, could get a Mogus' Favor and kill their Leonin right now as well. Although that doesn't seem needed. Have another Pilgrim too. I've got a lot of options. I guess I like Commanding Presence. Opponent's almost empty-handed, so they're maybe out of removal. Also want to maybe trade for Leonin before we put something valuable in the graveyard, so the Rise to Glory doesn't lose any effectiveness. This might imply that they have a enchantment that they can play at instant speed, like one of the omens, to pump the Leonin. So I could still block with my Leonin instead of the Pilgrim. Otherwise they probably wouldn't make this attack. And we'll exile... I guess Horn Beetle. Not too many ways for them to get creatures back in green whites, but I guess they could have an Elspeth Conqueror's death of their own. Alright, so we lost a good target for commanding presence, but that's alright. Can uh, Pilgrim and get maybe a Dreadful Apathy. Could also get Aspect of Lamprey. Although I think what I'm going to do is play Pilgrim. We suspect they have an Omen in hand, so I guess we probably won't catch them with two cards in hand. But I could end of turn Flicker of Fate to get Aspect and then maybe make them discard next turn. So for now I have to decide between Apathy and Grasp. Probably leaning Apathy. Just in case they play a big creature, I guess Apathy is our best uh, removal spell here. And then Pilgrims also block the tokens from Omen quite well. Alright, Siona. That one may be better answered to with a Myers Grasp. So I've got a lot of options. Could Flicker get Aspects. Could Flicker get Myers Grasp. Myers Grasp synergizes quite well with the Rise to Glory as well. I'll get Aspect, I think. That's a good one too. But let's make him discard while we still can. Alright, so they were holding a pump spell, which is why they maybe made that attack uh, a couple turns ago. Arkan could have gotten answered by the Apathy. And I guess we'll take four. Chumping just to enable Rise to Glory could have also been reasonable. Drawing the Myers Grasp is quite nice. Conquering Death with no creature in the graveyard, maybe not the best. Yeah, let's just grasp Siona. And I could presence the Pilgrim right now, and then next turn maybe use Apathy on the Wardens to start attacking. And we've got Rise to Glory in case something happens to my creature anyway. Apathy also good on the Arachnir. 
I guess they're still missing double green here for an escaped Arachnir. Also can't forget about the Labyrinth, which could come in handy. Definitely don't mind Helios Pilgrim ending up in the graveyard somehow. I guess I should have maybe exiled the Wardens in response so they didn't gain two. So jumping with Pilgrim seems totally fine here. And then I can rise to glory. Could also get back Myers Grasp, although what happens if they have a Karmatra's Blessing? That could get ugly. Conqueror's Death can also get rid of the Hydra's Growth itself. Could get Apathy back. And then I could put the Dreadful Apathy on the Arachnir. They could still have Karamatra's Blessing, but between Conqueror's Death and the Labyrinth, I'm not too worried. Alright, nightly a good target for Conqueror's Death, potentially. But I'm not in a hurry to get rid of it here. Can maybe wait a turn. Their opponent should be dead exactly here. 7, 8, plus 3 is 11. Exile sentry, tap down token, attack with all. Well, that game wasn't particularly close. Revoke existence seems okay. Can answer a potential enchantment creature like Nylia. Or an aura. So that's an option. Triumphant Surge could be okay if one of their creatures gets out of hand with a Hydra's Growth. I think I can stay put. Revoke is maybe a bit narrow, like sure it answers Nylia, but for the most part their creatures weren't enchantments. So I don't think I want it. Definitely got to remember the pump spell they showed us in the first game, too. Last time we put them on the play, and I think it paid off, but uh, this one I'm probably going to have to mulligan, sadly. It does have potential if we draw planes and void into presence on three. I have eight planes in the deck, but if I miss, then we only have Liar as a play. I guess it's closer than it looks. But I don't know if we need to take risks when our deck is so powerful. Alright, this is pretty nice too. Eidolon plus a bunch of enchantments. Rise to Glory can go to the bottom. Hope they don't have a Mystic Repeal. Now I could wait and Elspeth's Nightmare it, but I don't think we're gonna lack targets with Elspeth's Nightmare. Okay, 
could go Envoy into Grasp, but I think I want a Nightmare for now. Our opponent's getting two for ones out of existence here. They did have a Mystic Repeal in hand, but maybe drew it for the turn. And uh, that's probably the card I want to get rid of. And then we can go Envoy into Grasp. I don't think I'm gonna Mogus' favor my own creature quite yet, but it's definitely a play we could make. Alright, understandably your opponent concedes. Well, that was a pretty brutal showing of our uh, deck there. Hateful Eidolon into Mars Grasp is a great start, and then Elspeth's Nightmare on top. Carrot, it's a good target for the favor here. Pilgrim, we already have a removal spell in hand, so I could decide to get the commanding presence. And now with the rise to glory, I don't think I mind. It's definitely close still with the uh, Mars Grasp, since they're likely to have removal in hand, but I don't have to play the Presence right away. Sadly, can't get back Elspeth Conqueror's death with our Rise to Glory. Could go Envoy into Mars Grasp. Um, could put Mogus' favor on the Pilgrim before it gets exiled. It's maybe better because I don't want to Mars Grasp and have them exile it because then I might not be able to get it back with Rise to Glory. Well, seems like a good turn for Mars Grasp, and if it somehow doesn't work out, we still have Apathy. Gets back Karyatid. They still know about the commanding presence. Alright, they have a second Hydra's Growth. So they're definitely a fan of that card. I mean, technically, presence can just keep jumping this forever and ever. Could maybe wait a turn before I apathy it. Play Pegasus. Chimera, so lots of one toughness creatures for Mogus' favor. <laughs> is that a third Hydra's Growth? Alright, I guess it is. Fair enough. At least we know there's no removal for presence. Missing double Y definitely hurts here. I kind of want to just presence. Could put it on Pegasus to gain some life. 
But maybe if they draw removal, I would rather put it on the Envoy. Don't even have to jump, could take five. Pilgrim can get another Myers Grasp, I believe, which gets rid of Chimera. But do I want to show them that I have another Myers Grasp in the deck? Since, I mean, they're just dying to my Flyers next turn too. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Alright, so black green Hydra's growth, there's no better way to describe it. So having removal is gonna be pretty important. Could also bring in Revoke just to get rid of the growth itself, but of course much better to get rid of the creature. So Triumphant Surge definitely coming in. And then I could consider Flicker Fate to just flicker the creature that they try to enchant. And it also resets the counters from the Hydra's growth, so it's still fine if we draw it later. So I don't mind the second one. And then... Our opponent's already 2 for one themselves by playing Hydra's Growth to an extent, so I don't know if we need Aspects. Funeral Rites to draw into more removal seems important. Saw plenty of targets for Mogus' favor. Leonin maybe not the most impressive. So I could cut that, or I could cut like a Soul Reaper of Mogus, although it's still potentially fine alongside Pilgrim or the tokens from Commanding Presence. Alright, let's cut the Soul Reaper. Keep the curve low so we can potentially trade off early as well if needed. Fine hands. Can maybe use our uh, Nightmare next turn on the Grove Dancer. So no need to kill it right away. Alright, Strider is a good one. So they will get to send Grove Dancer in response. But uh, Leonin can also hold off the Strider. I uh, could flicker the Nightmare to kill Renata here. Don't have to Myers Grasp. I guess that's reasonable. Could also make it so we kill the Strider and exile their graveyard with the third chapter. Return to nature conquers death, sure. So they wanted to avoid the third chapter where it exiles their graveyard, I guess. 
So... This turn I kind of like just playing the Pegasus, and then we can set up Pilgrim to get Commanding Presence, perhaps. then exile the strider and then we can maybe use Myers grasp on the forerunner here we also have the labyrinth so I don't have to prioritize pilgrim to get removal in case of hydro's growth since the labyrinth kind of answers that as well so I think I'm just gonna get commanding presence to close out the game faster And then I could put it on the Envoy, maybe, to diversify a little bit. Ah, did another plummet out of the sideboard, fair enough. Don't get to draw a card from Eidolon, since the enchantments didn't enter the battlefield yet. So knowing about the plummets will also definitely change our uh, approach should there be a game 3. Can still attack with everyone and use Labyrinth on the Viper. Flicker can flicker Pilgrim to get another enchantment as well. Uh, I've got a wealth of options. I guess Flicker Pilgrim get Mogus' favor is fine here. And then I could do this as well. All right, sweet. So, managed to best the Golgari Hydra deck. Nice Alright, so time for the final boss. In the dark, player draw. We've been drawing a lot with this deck. I think I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah, this sounds reasonable. I need a third land, of course, to get things started. A swamp. Also gives me access to an early Mogus' favor. But then Pilgrim could also get uh, more removal. I think it's closer to a keep than a mulligan, but it's uh, definitely somewhat risky. Two good draw steps in a row. Up against the green-white, so maybe another aura base deck. So I could Pilgrim for removal spell, could Pilgrim for commanding presence. Don't really want to kill the familiar. And it seems too early for aspects. Although... Aspect would also be reasonable here. Nah, I think I'll wait. Entrancing Lair can get conquered by Elspeth in a couple turns. 
So, yeah, I could go for the commanding presence still. This also a better turn to Aspect when they have three cards in hand, but there's a good chance I can get them with exactly two cards next turn. So they can use Lyre this turn on the Envoy. Keeps it at bay, but then in a turn or two we'll conquer death the Lyre. So it kind of sets up our future play. Unicorn, opponent's got two cards in hand. So now is a good time for Aspects. And then probably still put it on the Envoy. Ooh, Arkan, that's a scary card. They can still get Constellation triggers from the Unicorn, so at some point we'll maybe exile it, but for now. It doesn't bother me too much. Don't think I need to Myers Grasp anything. Might keep cards in hand in case of an aspect of Lamprey on the splash. Alright, luckily the Envoy not uh, small enough for the Nightmare. I guess I'll start emptying my hand here. Can favor on the Envoy. Grasp, I guess a familiar, so they can jump. Long term, the sentries may be more threatening, but this would be a three turn clock if we kill the flyer. The third chapter here will trigger before our graveyard gets exiled. So we still get a Heliot's Pilgrim back from the graveyard, which should be quite good too. And our opponent packs it in, so a Abzon enchantment deck featuring maybe Elspeth's Nightmare on the Splash and the uh, Arkan, which is definitely a scary card. Yeah, it seems more likely that uh, the black is just a splash here than anything else. They could also be splashing for final death or maybe some other removal. So how do we want to approach this? Triumphant Surge doesn't get Archon, so I don't think I want it. Leonin, maybe not amazing on the ground, gets blocked by a bunch of their creatures. So we could potentially board that out, maybe in favor of an extra Flicker, which can also punish enchantments. Still not a huge fan of Karmatra's Blessing, since we don't have a ton of actual enchantment creatures that I want to protect, although could be fine against like plummets to protect our envoy. So I think Leonin's coming out and then it's either an extra flicker or blessing which both do a similar thing, they can protect our creature from removal. Flicker may be a bit more versatile. Yeah, I can definitely expect some plummets out of the opponent's sideboard. So having a way to potentially counteract those is going to be important. And yeah, our opponent put us on the play. So we put them on the play in game one, and now they're reversing it. And sadly can't keep this. But I can keep this. And then probably bottom the swamp. Uh, we do have Elspeth Conquers Death that's double white. 
And I'm playing the idol on turn one, so probably won't need double black anytime soon. Elspeth's Nightmare, definitely a nice pickup. Just gotta hope they deploy some creatures here. Perfect. Now if they have an Arkhan, that's still gonna be a problem. Don Evangel. Let's have a look. No Arkhan, their own Nightmare, but no Black. Aspect on Splash as well. Destiny Spinner, which could be a Mars Grasp target. Or I could just take out the Evangel now. Nightmare is probably the scarier of the two cards here, since we're almost empty-handed. Alright, Rise to Glory could be good too. Alright, they drew a Swamp. Given that they drew a Swamp, I don't hate just using Rice, getting back uh, Myers Grasp here. So they won't have a target for the Aspects. Also want to think about holding lands in case they play enemy later. But Labyrinth is pretty valuable to still play. Could also Mogus's favor just to increase our clock. Put it on the Envoy. Think I'm okay with that. So Rumbling Sentry coming down. But the Labyrinth means they can gain life with the Aspects if they put it on the Sentry here. Flicker of Fates. Doesn't do a whole lot right now. So I'm still not sure if I want to play my land since that could keep up Labyrinth plus Flicker. Can also flicker their creature in response to the aspects. So they don't get the ETB effects. I think I hold them. Otherwise I'm gonna be forced to keep up Labyrinth every turn to prevent them gaining life. They do get to scry towards land 6 for the Envoy, or, or for the Enemy of Enlightenment here. So I still probably need one removal spell to get across the finish line. Alright, there's a removal spell. So this should be pretty straightforward. Hit for 3. Let them play Enemy. And next turn, Apathy for the win. Alright, sweet. So got a clean 5 and 0. Oh. Yeah, our deck was definitely pretty stacked. Quickly reviewing our deck here. What did we learn from this? Well, I was very impressed with the Transcendent Envoys. Didn't draw them in the first couple matches, but uh, 
They were pretty important to help us double spell in later games. And then also a nice target for commanding presence. Double Heliot's Pilgrim did a ton of work. Also very good with the Flicker of Fate and uh, Rise to Glory, getting them back from the graveyard over and over. Very happy that we had multiple enchantments to search up, since sometimes you have those decks where you may only have two or three auras to search up. But here we had a couple more, so even late in the game the Pilgrim was still searching up auras from our deck. Which was nice, Rise to Glory was decent, although we sometimes had hands where we maybe preferred second Rise to Glory to be something else since we were maybe a bit light on creatures in the graveyard too. So our creature count was definitely a bit on the lower end here. And then um, Unicorn was fine, just gave us a big body. And the aspect was pretty important too in some games. Making the opponent discard when they had exactly two cards in hand. is definitely a play we made a few times. And then overall 16 lands plus birth. I think was okay, we had that one game where we ended up flickering the birth to give us land 5. Gave us a wall, gave us some life. Otherwise, we could have also played 17 lands without the birth, which would have been fine too, but didn't have a ton of turn 2 plays, so birth on turn 2 is uh, quite nice since our deck was pretty controlling. The Hateful Eidolons did a ton of work as well, so did some of the usual suspects like Elspeth's Nightmare, Myers Grass, Blyre, and very happy with the Labyrinth as well. Although I guess a final death instead of Labyrinth would have been fine too. So yeah, overall. Pretty fun uh, run with black-white enchantments, topped off with a nice rare in Elspeth Conqueror's death. So that's how ideally your black-white enchantment deck looks like. Of course, you're not always gonna get lucky enough to open some of those powerful uh, commons and uncommons in each draft, but that's kind of what you want to aim for. Let's crack some packs. Alright, what uh, is the pick here if we can't pick the best rare in the set, which is probably Dream Trawler. Probably Entrancing Liar pack one pick one, just keeps us more open. Alright, uh, Chimera is pretty decent too, although haven't had too much success drafting the blue-red deck on uh, Magic Arena. But then you do want to prioritize cards like Thrill Possibility, cards like Omen of the Sea, all those cheap instants. Nyad is also quite good in that deck, Stern Dismissal, so it's kind of a tempo deck. And the blue-red deck is also one of the few decks where you might consider playing... I forget the name, Sleep of the Dead I think it's called. So that's kind of a more tempo-oriented deck where you might want uh, the tap effect to keep up the pressure. And blue otherwise doesn't have a ton of escape cards. And then here, Chimera is quite decent, Wanderer can be good if you get enough enchantments, and the Favored is also quite solid. I think I would Chimera over Favored, but it's definitely close. And then between Wanderer, I probably would still go with Chimera, but uh, could also go in the green direction instead. And then Metamized Prophecy is a fine early pick. I guess we finally opened all the rares, so we're starting to get gems. It makes these uh, pack openings a bit less interesting when it comes to limited discussion, sadly, but so be it. Still have a couple mythics left to open. Um, yeah, I think I would prophecy over Blind Breath in most cases. And uh, another Siona pack. Yeah, I mean, Siona. That's kind of the build around card for the green white tech. But whenever I see the green white tech, I'm not super impressed. Yeah, I guess you could take like a favorite of Aros as a, a bit more flexible card. Maybe try and draft a go white deck with Omen of the Sun. Although, usually, you don't want to pick the super early. Cards like the Hoplite are way more important to pick early and then hopefully get omens later. Blind Breath could also be a fun build around. Alright, sweet. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.